for well-qualified customers. Visit your Acura dealer today. You're watching the Valley's News Leader with Brian Loftus, Denise Valdez, and Ted Florendo. This is 8 News Now at 5. Four dozen engineers and space scientists from NASA are in Southern Nevada this week to check out some technology that could take us back to the moon and maybe to Mars. The project is called Gateway. NASA wants to have an orbital station around, I should say, above the moon by 2024. And one of the four companies that's being considered for that station is Bigelow Aerospace, and that's right here in North Las Vegas. George Knapp of the I-Team got an exclusive look at the spacecraft that's being examined by NASA right now. Yeah, you know what's wrong with uh, space? There isn't enough of it <laughs> out there, at least uh, not enough habitable space, that is, to live and work. It took close to 45 launches to assemble all the pieces that make up the inner International Space Station at a cost of tens of billions of dollars. What if you could create a larger, safer habitat around the moon using only one or two launches? That technology is why a large team from NASA is in town right now. And one of the things that all the astronauts that have ever come into this habitat have said to us is they're blown away by the actual, the space. I mean, this is, is, is like a very large apartment. Dr. Colm uh, Kelleher yeah, is the scientist in charge of developing life support systems for the BA-330, the spacecraft being examined and tested this week by dozens of NASA engineers to figure out if it will be chosen for Project Gateway, NASA's plan to return humans to the moon in this decade. Once launched into space, tanks of compressed air allow the 330 to expand, providing a future crew with more room to live and work. This craft could work as an orbital station above the moon or as habitats on the lunar surface. So this is a standalone spacecraft. It doesn't really depend on anything else. And it, it can orbit the moon or it can be in uh, LEO, low Earth orbit, or it could actually be used uh, on the way to Mars. So it's a, a tremendously versatile spacecraft. NASA teams have already checked out systems built by three competitors, large aerospace giants. Bigelow Aerospace is the final candidate to be inspected. The feedback so far has been positive. So far, the NASA teams have been very excited and uh, enthusiastic about the chance to be inside a B-330. Blair Bigelow, granddaughter of the company's founder, is standing in front of a future project, the Olympus, an even bigger version of the same expandable technology. The company launched two smaller craft into orbit more than a decade ago. A third version is currently attached to the International Space Station and has exceeded performance expectations. Unlike its competitors, the company developed these craft on its own Dime, not with federal dollars. We have about 50 people from NASA here uh, all this week. At a conference and table the inside the Olympus, Olympus company president and, uh, Robert Bigelow, known for playing his cards we, close we to the vest, says NASA yeah, has nudged him to be more and, open about his work. In fact, we're being pushed to be more overt in describing ourselves and showing pictures of what we do and not be so secretive. So uh, we're trying to come out of the box. Bigelow's penchant for secrecy stems in part from the very real threat of industrial espionage. Elsewhere in the plant, a working version of his latest spacecraft is under construction, but we can only show the mannequin astronauts hovering around it because the technology inside is new and proprietary. Even though he's competing against aerospace behemoths, Bigelow is confident his expandable tech can prevail because it's safer, cheaper, and far more versatile than anything else. Um, so it not only has a, a tremendous bandwidth of different uses in low Earth orbit, about 25 different kinds of uses, like maybe a dormitory would be one, uh, growing food would be two. So there are about 25 of those kinds of uses. And, and then uh, it definitely can be uh, a lunar depot. The version being tested by NASA is larger than it looks. In space, the floor levels would not exist, but it has workstations where lunar rovers could be controlled, where moon rocks or soil samples could be examined, crew quarters, a sick bay, and twice as many toilets as any rival. If it works for Project Gateway, it could also work for a mission to Mars. The original purpose for building a Mars transit habitat that's why this technology exists. That was how it was originally conceived. And that's something that we still believe in very much today. 
We got to see some of the NASA team when they arrived last week. We didn't have a chance to interview any of them, but we're told the next part of the test occurs in early September for astronauts. All of them veterans of space missions will arrive to spend several days in the spacecraft, like taking it for a test drive. Dr. Colum Kelleher was interviewed for that story as someone I know well. We co-authored a book years ago together. He gave a detailed tour of the BA-330 to our I-Team photographer, Matt Adams. We have a link to that on our website as well as other resources. So is is this a gateway project like a, a done deal? And what other companies are kind of in the in the mix? Uh, it is approved. It's a go. It was originally scheduled for 2028. They've moved up the timetable to 2024. Mm -hmm. The Trump administration wants that done. And so it is moving forward. Uh, they're up against some big ones, uh, Lockheed, yeah. Boeing, and Sierra Nevada. So, But they've got a good shot. They are visionaries for yeah. sure. Yeah. Thanks, George. Very interesting. Can we all agree that was the coolest conference room ever, too, that Mr. Bigelow has? <laughs> <laughs> we How they all... roll over there. Let's attend a meeting there. That looked pretty cool. That's great stuff.